That's another thing. I mean, you've got lots of these minotaurs. You've got fawns walking around. How surreal a day of work is that? It is pretty odd, especially when we used to have um, massive speakers set up on location so we could play music in between takes. So you just have this crowd of dancing, fawns, minotaurs, people in costume, all kind of jumping about to the Beatles in the middle of a field in New Zealand. It was, it was quite surreal. That's kind of it's in that good day of work. Yeah, well, pretty unusual. It's not your usual office job. <laughs> yeah, certainly beats working at, say, an Asda or McDonald's, doesn't it? Dancing around in a field with fawns and Beatles music. But for you, then, how long was an average filming day? Um, well, it depends. I mean... The thing is, I always kind of had to do kind of work in the evenings for school. So you might do like a 12-hour day on set and then, you know, three hours of work in the evening or something like that. So it could get quite long, but it's always really good fun. But should, did they give you day off? And what did you tend to do when they gave you days off? We did have days off. When we were in, we shot most of the second film in the Czech Republic and we spent quite a lot of time in Prague. So um, we used to go to the cinema and kind of just have meals and chill out together. Um, when we were in New Zealand, the boys did some bungee jumping, which I didn't quite feel I could muster the <laughs> strength for. So we won't be seeing you doing any high wire work then in the future? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> if that, you've obviously read the books and things like that. If there was another book that you've read that you could make into a film now, what would it be and why? Any book. Any book. I think there's a, there's a book called Alice in Exile by Piers Paul Reed, which is just a really, really fun read. And it's about... Um, it's about a woman in Russia. Uh, any <laughs> more details on that other than about a woman in Russia? I think, well, it's just a really good, pacey story. I think it's always really nice to have kind of good stories at the hearts of films. That's fair enough. Now, as so you worked with uh, a gentleman who we had here yesterday, Warwick Davis. Now, when you meet people that have been in Narnia before, did they come on set and give you any advice or anything like that? Um, not really, I suppose. I mean, it, it was a very giving atmosphere in that... Um, you could, uh, some people had different habits, like Sergio, who played King Miraz in the second film, used to, um, before he did a kind of take, used to amp himself up by shouting. And uh, the boys took to doing that on the battlefield. And just kind of hop, hop, like kind of psyching themselves up. Um, and so you do just pick up things from other actors. But I don't think that we were ever kind of having deep and meaningful conversations saying, so how do you do this? How do you do that? And what kind of things did you do to psych yourself up then for your scenes? Um, I mean, it was always a bit strange, actually, because you, you think you're ready to do something and then there's a 20-minute break and you never quite know when you're going to be off and on. Um, lots of us kind of used our iPods and stuff like that um, if we had a kind of big action scene. But um, mostly it was just sort of turn up and do your stuff. And you got, as we've already established, you got on well with the other rest of the members of the Pevensey uh, group. What was it like, though, for you when you realised, OK, this is it, we're not doing uh, myself, we're not doing any more Narnia films. Do you still think back and think, right, if I could rewrite the books, then I'd go back, or...? Yeah, I think it was, it was quite weird at the end of the second film for Will and me, knowing that we weren't going to be in the third one um, and that everyone was going to go off and have another adventure without us. But at the same time, I've had such a good time doing them, but I felt kind of ready to go to uni and do something different and do new projects in the future. Well, that brings us to the end of our talk then. So I'd like to thank and give a massive round of applause Jim, to Anna Popperwell. Thank you. Thank you. So there you go. My thanks to the lovely Anna Popperwell uh, for, uh, for attending Memorabilia and for visiting the fans. And uh, the talk, she's just done a university course as well. So uh, I'm sure she did really well, but uh, congratulations to her. But thank you very much for jo uh, for her for uh, that it was an incredible experience. Very nice to meet her. She's a very charming young woman, and it's nice to meet a Hollywood actress that actually has her head screwed on. So yes, and so thank you very much to her. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week if you're good, people. If you're good, uh, we've got some other cracking interviews coming your way. Um, so you'll be really uh, some really good ones uh, from. I'm not, I want I want to tell.